I am Justin Boyd. I am George Luna. I'm Brittany Pacheco. And I'm Franklin Cooper. And we are the Watchers in the Basement. Welcome to another edition of the Watchers in the Basement. We are here to talk about the fourth episode of the Marvel Studios series, Loki. The episode's titled The Nexus Effect. Before we uh, get into the plot and do our usual yakety yak breakdown, let's go around the room and see what everyone thought about the, the episode. Uh, George, what'd you think about the Nexus event? Oh, man. Uh, best episode so far. It, it just, last episode, like I said, not a lot happened. It just seemed kind of quiet. And I think all our predictions came true that the TVA was going to come in and save them. So uh, that was cool to see. A lot happened in this episode that we'll jump into. Pretty crazy. I have some questions. Uh, but overall, like, I think it's the best episode, like, by far. Okay. Brittany, what'd you think? Yeah, exactly. I'm, I'm with George because last episode was, you know, too much talky talky, not a lot of progression in the storyline, in my opinion. But this this episode made up for the third episode with, uh, of course, action, definite progression in the storyline. And um, yeah, I have a lot of questions, too. Um, very concerning questions, actually. So anyway, Frank, what did you think? <laughs> uh, I thought... I, mean, I thought it was good. I mean, it was exquisite, actually. Uh, I did say in episode two of our podcast that I think the TVA are some are up to no good. So to see that come into fruition, I thought was a uh, was really really pleasing to me. Um, I I don't know about y'all. I need to know if Loki's bisexual or if he's if he's if he's straight because I didn't I didn't get much of I didn't get much clarity on that. And and with the with the flashbacks of with the time loop with Sylvie, no Sylvie was um, Sif. Sif, it, it really makes sense about you know his his narcissism and his uh, fear of being alone. Seeing that really play a part, really kind of showcased uh, who Loki is. So I, I thought it was a great episode. I think it yeah. has been determined that he is bisexual. Uh, yeah. Okay. They they, they mentioned that in the last episode when they were on the train. Yeah, I agree with y'all. I think it was the best episode by far. And if y'all remember back, I think in episode one, I talked about how I'd, I had saw an interview with Tom Hiddleston and he talked about how episodes four and five were his favorite. They were kind of the, he thought they were the most important episodes in the series. So I wasn't surprised that the fourth episode was the best one. Um, we'll get into like the reasons why it was here in a second, but I, I, I do want to kind of just shout out the music in this episode. The music, the score was awesome. Um, the the uh, the post credit or mid mid credit scene. I mean, um, there was a part where the music sounded like the Avengers theme was about to start playing mm -hmm. before we see who's there. So, and we'll get to that here in a second. But uh, yeah, the music was excellent, and uh, yeah, I really enjoyed the episode. So For let's sure. let's get into it. The episode opens in Asgard. <laughs> Ever heard of it? <laughs> um, we see. A young child that later we learn is a young Sylvie, or a Sylvie, sorry, Sylvie. Um, she's uh, playing with like little toys and stuff, and then all of a sudden she gets arrested. Um, she's arrested by, uh, or she's uh, taken, she's basically put through the same paces that Loki was in episode one when he was arrested. Um, she's taken before the judge with uh, Ravona, Ravona Rinslayer, you know, bringing her before the judge. And if you notice, Ravona, she hasn't aged one bit. And that was probably like what 25, 30 years ago, just my guess. So that's so kind of suspicious. <laughs> I I don't know. I don't know if she's in charge of this whole thing or what the deal is, but uh, well, I did notice how she did not look any different than she did in present day. Well, remember Mobius had said to Loki that time passes differently yeah. with the TVA. So th right. there is a concept of time, but like how how slow or how fast it moves is still in question. Because the fact that like Sylvie, obviously, you know, she was taken as a child, but she grew up, you know, how does all that work out? You know, how much time has actually passed? Yeah. Yeah. So the little girl's able to escape just like Loki was in the first episode. Well, he, he didn't escape as easily as she did, but she gets away and then Renslayer has to go meet with the timekeepers. They blame her for, oh, in present day, we flash forward. Renslayer meets with the timekeepers. They blame her for losing Loki in the variant. Um, and at this point, 
you know, obviously later on we find out, but at, at this point I was going to ask y'all, do y'all think the timekeepers look real? No. <laughs> no. I, I already said from the beginning that they, they weren't going to be real. Yeah, they didn't look real to I me. Now, that. they are real in the comics from, yeah. from what I've uh, gathered, but uh, I, I didn't even think they were going to be robots or androids, which we later learned, you know, in the episode. I thought they were just statues, just like figureheads that, you know, someone spoke for, so... I will say Falcon had called it in Falcon and the Winter Soldier, the big three, aliens, androids, and wizards. So <laughs> we have yeah. a, we now have androids. So just saying, I, I don't know. I think they kind of reminded me of uh, Snoke from Star Wars. Maybe it's just me, but <laughs> I was like, no, this... no, they, they were better than Snoke. Okay. Okay. I'm just saying, but it kind of gave me that, that kind of idea. He was a robot? <laughs> let's go. Don't, don't, let's don't go around that road. <laughs> okay. Back to Luke. literally nothing is better than Snoke. So, <laughs> Snoke actually was. So okay. So back to Loki. Um, we learn that C twenty, the young female soldier, who um, you know in the previous episodes, you know that's the one that Sylvie had been in contact with. We learn that she's dead. Now, I didn't. I didn't really believe that. What did y'all think about that one when you learned that? You know, she was, was the Rinslayer says that she died. That was not surprising. I knew they were going to, like, they, she knew too much. Like, she was, sh like, shaken up from it, and she she knew too much. That That's like a loose end for them. So, of course, they were going to kill her. Yeah, no, I, I have questions about that, because when they prune someone, right, they, they get stuck with that little lightning type stick and they kind of just like dissolve or whatever but like does that actually kill them because obviously you know jumping ahead with what happened to loki he spoiler went alert. to yeah spoiler alert y'all uh he went to like some other place in the timeline or as you know presumably so it's like are they actually dead or do they go back to like their the timeline that they came from and have their memories erased entire i don't know frank what what's your take on you know if c20 actually is dead and what actually happens to people when they're pruned yeah i mean leading up to uh, the mid credit scene i thought they were they were dead but um i mean it's compared a little bit but loki got vaporized or pruned he wakes up in this different looking like, like a negative zone or like a in between multiple worlds with like different loki's so maybe so maybe when they get pruned they just go they get transported to a, a the negative zone or some type of um, in limbo somewhere. So um, that's probably that's probably where, you know, C20 is at, Mobius is at probably as well. Um, but I don't think we've seen the last of Mobius, C20, or Loki, for sure. Yeah, I agree. I mean, it's, I mean, that's one of the many questions that I think this episode raised, just because like, if the whole idea that timekeepers like created everyone, are they just so willingly going to prune everyone that doesn't fall in line or you know what i'm saying like they're part they created them like why would you also destroy them i don't know it's it's weird to me but who who did they create though are the timekeepers yeah well they supposedly created you know everything on the sacred timeline so in general like people so i guess it's like a marvel version of like a god or a higher being right you know so right. but we learned that they didn't create any of the people that are in the TVA, right? Right, right. So yeah, that was like for sure the big reveal that that everyone within the TVA is a variant. They were plucked from whatever timeline, time period that they you know were in, and that was what uh, C twenty was telling whoever in in that video on that that tempad that you know everything was real. You know. Sylvie didn't create this this world in her mind. She pulled memories from, you know, her past, and that's why she kept saying, "It's real, it's real, it's real." You know, because that's what she kept saying when they were just they discovered her. But, you know, Ravona was not having it. She's like, "Nope, I'm going to stop this, you know, interview, whatever, right here." And, I mean, she definitely she knows stuff, right? Mm -hmm. She definitely is behind some things and wants to keep status quo. And now that that information's out there, it has Mobius and even, uh, is it B-15? Um, they're questioning, 
they're questioning, you know, the reality of, you know, the TVA and their own existence. How did they get there? I guess my question is, um, going back a couple of episodes when Sylvie um, enchanted C20, was that, her first, was that her first time enchanting somebody from the TVA and realizing that these people's minds were erased? Or has she tried before? Like, cause she's been around for what, 25, 30 years maybe? Well, given the flow of time going in and out of timelines, if that was not her first time enchanting somebody, why not just enchant everybody that, that comes after you in the first place and, and try to turn those people against TVA? Yeah, instead of killing them? It's, yeah, because like she murdered a lot of people. Yeah, over, over I, I, thought, I thought the same thing. That, that doesn't make sense. No, it doesn't. I'm going to go out on a limb and just say that perhaps by taking C20, if if maybe there was a sense of okay maybe this one's more weak minded compared to like everyone else that she's fought you know maybe she could manip not manipulate but enchant her and and you know get that information that she needs about the timekeepers and therefore reveal the reality of you know c20 being a variant etc that's just my take on it but it's a good question about why didn't she enchant all these you know hunters in the past as, as opposed to killing them but i don't know maybe you know it's like it's a time and place for everything um and even so it's like how she found out that that the tva had you know present day loki to come and find her like how does she find out that information unless it was through uh getting into the mind of of the hunters you know what i'm saying yeah. i think she has okay. disney plus They're, they have like 60 million subscribers <laughs> so she's probably one of them Okay, so back to the back to the plot. Uh, now we're at the point where Loki and Sylvie are uh, they're on they're still on Lamentus, which hasn't exploded or whatever's going to happen from episode three. Uh, she starts talking about her life and about how she wasn't supposed to exist. She says, "I grew up at the ends of a thousand worlds. Now this this is where I'll die." And then we see Mobius and B fifteen. They're looking for Loki and Sylvie, and then Loki and Sylvie have a pretty tender moment where you know loki says hey we we may lose but we won't die or we don't die and that tender moment creates this nexus event that is the reason why they were discovered uh by the tva so mm -hmm. what what's y'all's take on that <laughs> that was very weird yeah he i don't know what is that like he's in love with himself or he he has yeah. feelings for himself well, see, that's what that's what I was questioning last week. Like, are variants the same people? Because I, I don't think they're the same mm -hmm. people. No, I don't think so. Technically, well, yeah. yeah, technically not. I guess. Yeah, they're different versions of, of the same name. Yeah, yeah. So it's like it's like, it's still, it's like an iPhone 10 and then an iPhone 11 the next year. It's the same brand but different version. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I I feel different that different price too. Yeah, <laughs> that's that's for damn sure. No, I feel that because the fact that he Loki admitted that he's a narcissist, you know, that's that is the epitome of being a narcissist mm -hmm. is that you love yourself, you know, everything about you and, you know, you're just the greatest. So it would make sense that he'd have feelings towards a variant that is him, but is the of the opposite sex like it's. Yeah, it was really strange, though, <laughs> Yeah, because it's not played that way. It's played the way they act. It's it's played that he really cares about her, you know, whether yeah. it's romantic or whatever. Mm -hmm. And you know, later on when we learn, you know, he when he thinks that she's dead, he's you know, in a you know, he's in a bad way. So, mm -hmm. but I wonder, I wonder if her upbringing and her being on the run and being hunted really created a soft spot for her. It seemed like once he found out about her story, about her being a variant and her. her you know, potentially some timelines, that's when he really felt empathy. Bad for her. Yeah, mm -hmm. for sure. I don't know if as much as narcissism as if more so that she felt he found love with her as, as as an individual and her story. And 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 some they're somewhat similar as far as being ostracized from their own society and the different versions of you know, because they're both orphans. So mm -hmm. I think I think because they have so much in common, I think he fell in love more with that than Oh, it's just, a, it's just another version of myself that I'm, I'm, I'm in love with. Or is he playing the game? I don't I mean, think so. 
Those were real emotions yeah. when he when he found out that she was her. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead, George. And I said when when he found out that she was like that Mobius told her that she died, like he li literally like shed a tear. He looked very sad. Yeah. So was, I think those are true emotions. Fair enough. Yeah. It's just, you know, this is the god of mischief that we're talking about and the goddess of mischief that we're talking about. They both can be playing each other, you know? Yeah. They, they have their own agendas and it's very <clears throat> possible, but at the same time, they could genuinely have some very odd, it's not even like, you know, sibling type love. It's just like, it's, you're in love with yourself, you know? It's just, you know, opposite sex. It's, I don't know, it's yeah. very, very weird. <laughs> I think, I think a tall tale as well, a true indicator that it's not a game for neither one of them is when mm -hmm. the was about to fall and they're holding hands, waiting for their, waiting for the wind to die. That mm -hmm. was like, that was true vulnerability that each Loki sh uh, showed in each other, saying, you know, mm -hmm. this, this, are, this are our last moments. We need to embrace this, you know. It was, it was kind of unspoken at that time before Morbius and the TVA came to save them. Mm -hmm. I think that was a, a true indicator that this is this wasn't like I want a mission to like deceive somebody and like get the upper hand. So I wonder too, because the fact that they they you know held hands and then thus caused this this break in the timeline, right? You know, the Nexus event, it was so strong. Everyone in the TVA is like, I've never seen anything like this before. I wonder if the fact that what makes a superior Loki superior is when you join all variants of Loki's to be one, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, she's one variant of, of Loki. We obviously have seen many different types of Lokis and, and do again with the mid credit scene. So it's like, I wonder if the whole thing is what makes a, this so powerful is you get all the Lokis to be in one place and that thus, you know, they're superior. Just curious. Yeah, that, the Lokis that was have, the they have to assemble. Yeah, yeah. But if that, was, if that was the case when they met in the end, like all of them were already together, wouldn't that like cause a, like if you say it like that, wouldn't that cause a? Well, a... I'm saying with like the physical like touch, you know, because they they Loki and Sylvie were together running around. They couldn't they couldn't be located by the TVA. Not until they you know held hands and you know about to face their death. Like that was the only time that. Right. They their location was discovered. That's what I'm saying. Like, I wonder if if that is the trick to it all. I don't know. Yeah, good question. Um, so Loki and Sylvie are apprehended by the TVA. We see Mo Mobius and Loki kind of exchange words, kind of like they've done every time they've been on screen together. Uh, Loki tells Mobius that, that the TVA is lying to him. Uh, Mobius orders Loki to be put into the uh, to a red outline portal sent to Asgard, where he is confronted by Lady Sif, and she's definitely pissed off because he cut off a piece of her hair as a joke of some sort. He's we we learn that he's like look, stuck in like a time loop, it just yeah. keeps on happening over and over. She gets mad at him, she knees him in the balls, and then she walks off, and then it just starts over. What did y'all think about the the return of Lady Sif? Uh, it was good to see her again. I know it's been a while since uh, we saw her. I think her last appearance was maybe an Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. show, I think, um, for Season. sure. Season four. Okay. But um, yeah, it was good to see her again. I, I, I think she's supposed to be in the third, fourth, what's it, whatever the next Thor oh. movie is, Love and Love Thunder. Love and Thunder. Love and Thunder, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so this was like a good way of kind of like reintroducing her back into the franchise. Um, honestly, when I saw that Loki was back in Asgard, I'm thinking, oh my God, he's going to have to face his mom and it's going to be some kind of like loop of, you know, painful memory. And that's how they were going to break him, you know, like, because obviously he felt some kind of way when his mom died or he saw that his mom died. So I thought that was going to be that very painful punishment of, you know, breaking him so he'll talk, but it was a little amusing to see Sif, um, for sure. But then, you know, Loki does break. So, Frank, what'd you think? Yeah, that's the, that would be a horrible way of being broken. Like, <laughs> and, and, and that, and from that standpoint, that wasn't even like his worst memory, maybe mm -hmm. physically, but um, yeah, I would never want to be put in a situation like that to where, you know, I'm reliving a, 
you know, physical pain or mental, mental, emotional pain. Uh, but I thought it was a great scene. It, it looked like <laughs> the, the funny part was when this, I think the second to last part where we thought he broke it and like she, she like, she like was about to hug him and need him to nuts again. I thought that was so <laughs> hilarious. I, thought, I really thought that he, that he broke through. But yeah. Um, yeah, that was that was a really good scene. There's a scene later on where she helps him back up, and then she she says, you know, you will forever be alone or whatever. So that was kind of a. I, I mean, he definitely broke through in a certain respect. So. Anyway, back to now that Sylvie and Loki are back with a TVA, Movius wants to interview Sylvie, but Ravona says, Ravona says, no, stick to your Loki. Now, it seems very clear the reason why she didn't want him to talk to Sylvie is because, you know, he knows that something is, is amiss. Uh, did y'all see that part of this coming? Oh, yeah, for sure. And also, I think, like, the reason she didn't want him to talk to her is like because like she had empathy for her for some reason like she let her go as a kid mm -hmm. like she didn't want him to do the same thing mm -hmm. and why why didn't you why didn't she take chase her down like that that's the crazy thing it, it yeah. seems like it should have been a lot easier for to find her as a child yeah that's a good point so she she let her go yeah, yeah. That, i mean that could have been like the beginning of her TVA career, she was still getting acclimated to getting the job done. And then seeing an eight-year-old kid, you know, that's that's supposed to be reset. Mm -hmm. It's a tough swallow. If you're yeah. far now, you know, as a hunter at the beginning stages of your, of your TVA career. Yeah, mm -hmm. but I mean, if that was her job and they really needed her, this is done, like someone else would have done it. Yeah, and what, was, what did this eight-year-old do that was so bad that they needed to, exactly. you know, but prune the her is, or reset her or whatever like the the reason i think she is because she was a good person like she was nice like as a kid she was playing to save asgard i don't know if y'all like saw that when she was playing with the toys and shit like yeah. Loki would have not played like that like i think it was just because in her timeline she was meant to be good because she knew that she was adopted like from the beginning so she was raised like with a happy it seemed like a happy childhood yeah. And I don't think she was uh, a Loki supposed to have that type of timeline. And that's why they wanted to get rid of her. Yeah, no, that's that's a good point. Just because the fact that um, the question is asked from Sylvie, you know, why, what what was it that I, what was my Nexus event? And everyone yeah. is like, I don't remember. I'm like, bitch. <laughs> yeah, she, she knows. Oh, for sure. For sure. Unless yeah. there actually wasn't a Nexus event. You know what I'm saying? Like, if if there's just some kind of reason just to go after variants of Loki's, I'm not saying that that's all the TVA yeah. is doing. They're going after different people, but like, obviously, there was something about Sylvie that either because she was just born and that yeah. was her Nexus event, or who knows? Um, hopefully, we'll get that that reason. I think, I think we will. I think yeah. like a wholesome Loki definitely would have created a Nexus event. That makes sense. <laughs> In theory, I mean, I think so. But yeah, to see like Sylvie as a child, you know, playing with the little toys and it was like, oh, look, that's that's Hela's wolf, you know, uh, mm -hmm. and and talking about the Valkyrie. And it reminded me of Thor from Ragnarok when he met Valkyrie. And he's like, oh, I always wanted to be one of you until I realized you were all women. Um, mm -hmm. So, I mean, in that sense, this Loki could have been a Valkyrie if, you know, she was yeah, allowed to have could, stayed in Asgard. That could have happened. <laughs> happened. Yeah. So anyway, I just like those little like nods to, to different uh, things we've seen in the past, especially when it comes to um, Thor, or, you know, past movies like that. Anyway. So. So. B-15, which we saw, yeah, I believe she's been in every episode, um, she starts to also realize that things aren't right with the TVA, and she, you know, she wants to, to meet with Sylvie, and, you know, because after, you know, Sylvie obviously, you know, touched her in the Rocks Card episode, and, you know, brought back some memories from when she lived on Earth, or wh wherever she's from, 
and so she did not uh, forget that. So I thought that was, I thought it was pretty interesting how they started like showing us that all these people were just abducted and then forced into um, servitude. You know, yeah, servitude, including the guy at the. And I I didn't notice this on my own. I I don't think anybody would except for one of those like YouTubers, the uh, the the emergency awesome people. I watched one of their videos and. There was a person in the beginning of the episode who was like arrested. He was a guy with a mustache and long hair. Mm -hmm. And they, the person on this show said that, that that person was one of the TVA guys that we see sitting at a desk. And it, it did look like the same actor. So it's like, I don't know how people notice that stuff, but wow. So, and so even that, I, I would assume that guy that we saw that was, uh, that was um, pruned in the beginning with Loki in the first episode, I assume he probably works for the TVA also um mm. uh, that's kind of interesting yeah so mobius and loki have a nice little chat mobius asks if uh loki's working with the variant or for her um you know working for her obviously doesn't uh go well with loki you know he's his own person um mobius then threatens to send loki back to lady stiff and so then loki makes up a story that yeah this whole thing was my idea we were going to infiltrate the tva and whatever um mobius uh, tells uh tells at this point mobius tells loki that uh sylvie's dead and we see loki get emotional and then but then he realizes that mobius is lying and that she's actually still alive um and that's when loki just kind of blurts out look you're all variants like the timekeepers took you from the timeline and they, they didn't create you and you can tell like it's a heated moment, but Mobius it's gets the wheels to turning. He starts thinking mm -hmm. about it. Like, so, um, and then obviously we see B 15, she meets with Sylvie. They, they go through a portal, which I don't know if you have noticed, but some of the portals are different colors than other ones. I, I don't know yeah. if that's, a, if there's a reason for that. It seems like they were all kind of had like an orange outline and then some of they were red for some of them. And yeah, I don't know if that means anything, but I noticed it. So I'm sure, I'm sure it does. Is there a green portal? <laughs> Just curious. It would go well with our background. Kind of would, yeah. That's, yeah. that's true. Yeah, it would work. That's true. Um, so yeah, next up. Pick, picking up on, on that moment, Justin, with, with yeah. B-15 and Sylvie, they go back to where that apocalypse event was happening in, what, 2050 in Alabama? And, yeah. and it's B-15 is just all like, you know, I saw something when you enchanted me uh, what did you put, you know, in my mind? And so we're getting, you know, Sylvia explains what her magic is. And, and so B15 is shown again, her true memories. And, and she says, I looked happy and it's like, okay, what now? She now knows the truth. So for someone who was very like pro TVA, I'm doing my job, you know, you're a variant, you're bad, et cetera, et cetera. Now it's like, okay, tables have turned. Now we got to take down the TVA. It's very interesting how people quickly turned <laughs> and, you know, really believe Sylvie, you know? She got pruned this episode, right? B-15? I don't think I she don't got remember. pruned. I, I think I don't remember. In, in that fight, she got, she got struck by one of the other hunters um, and fell to the ground, but I don't think she got pruned. Oh, okay. Yeah, there's, there's only a, cu a couple of people that were pruned um okay. in this episode i don't i don't really remember that i remember her i thought like sylvie kind of helped her kind of get away no oh, okay. no because remember uh b15 came um so obviously the jumping elevator. ahead yeah from the elevators when they're at the timekeeper's floor she comes out oh with right, right right sword. yeah she, busts in. Yeah, 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 she tosses it and then she's fighting the two people at the elevators and then one of them like knocks her out so yeah okay thanks for refreshing my memory because i do have it in my notes there but uh yeah, I got you. Okay. But I've I've slept since I watched the episode, so I forgot. Um, what did y'all think about the scene where Mobius meets with Ravona in her her chambers or whatever, and he switches the tim pads with her? That was smooth. Yeah, for sure. Super slick. He uh, obviously feels that there's there's something going on. Um, Frank, what did you think of that conversation between Mobius and and uh, Ravana? I think I think the conversation stemmed from Mobius really wanted to 
verify if Loki was telling the truth. I think out of all, all the lies that Loki has said throughout the this, uh, this series, that was the one thing that actually made sense to him that he wanted to get proof on. And I think from the minute, and then combine that with the fact that Ramona, uh, what was her name? Ramona, what's her name? Ravana? Ravana. Ravana, combined with the fact that Ravana kept on staring, like staring away from the fact that she, he, he didn't give, she didn't give clarity on why C20 was not, wasn't able to be seen by, um, by, by Mobius. And um, I, I think that, I think those, those factors help really create distrust between uh, Mobius and Ravana. Um, mm -hmm. So I, it, it was, a, it was a good scene to, to show the viewers that, you know, Mobius is turning everything that Mobius believed in is not mm -hmm. really what it is. And I think the great indicator in episode one with the jet skis, like, what does that come from? If one guy doesn't know what fish is, how can, how can Mobius know what a jet ski is? You know what I'm saying? So I, I think the show did a great job of, of like laying down little clues there mm -hmm. that Mobius did have a previous life before the TBA. No, I agree. And the fact that we saw some kind of maybe sparks between the two, like they have like a, a very special friendship, relationship, whatever you want to call it. And, you know, maybe in Ravana's, you know, opinion that by keeping up this ruse about the real truth about the TVA from Mobius, I mean, that just keeps him safe, protected, whatever the word you want to use is. But, you know, now that he's questioning it, um, I, I'm sure he's got great influence around the TVA. So if, if he believes it to be true and gets concrete evidence, you know, what can he do? He's going to start, you know, an uprising with, with other people. Right. So, um, there's a definite real threat for sure. I think Ravana did a great job of like, kind of like, I won't say flirting, but like the, the, the slight sexual tension between them. I think she did that to like keep him at bay. I don't think she's really into him. I think she really did that to like, mm -hmm. Ste steer him away from the truth of what the TVA is really all about. Yeah, because yeah. because even keep in mind, like when they're signing off papers of closing the case, you know, he takes a look at that pin that she hands him, and it says Franklin D. Roosevelt, and and he's looked at that pin once before, as if there's some there's some meaning behind it. Either you know it's from his time period. Um, there there's some significance behind it, obviously, and you know he just he'll ask questions and like you said she you know redirects the conversation you could go anywhere and anytime you know where would you go and that kind of thing and and yeah it's it, it was kind of a weird conversation obviously you know let's avoid you know talking point but um she for sure is behind a lot of you know secret keeping of the tva bad girl frank you into the bad girls too <laughs> Hey man, it's my weakness, man. Toxic <laughs> toxicity is my is my favorite when it comes to. Oh women. my god, <laughs> Jesus! I think that's a system of down song too. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Um, yeah, it is. So, and I don't know if we point this out, but Ravona at one point she says that she didn't want the reason why she the real reason why she didn't want the variant to interact with Mobius because she didn't want the variant to hurt Mobius because right. as she says, they're friends against time, allies to the end. A friendship like ours is uncommon. So there are a lot of good yeah. quotes in this episode. So I just want to say that because I typed it up. So anyway, <laughs> just keeping it fucking real. Um, okay. So Mobius shows up in, in uh, Loki's time loop after he had, uh, he, you know, he switched the Tim pad with uh, Ravona and uh, he had watched, you know, C2 or some C20s uh, kind of uh, confession. You know, confession or whatever that, Hey, this is all real. You know, those are memories from my life that this, the variant took me back to a time that I've actually lived in and that the TVA is kind of all bullshit. And mm -hmm. so Mobius shows up in Loki's time loop and, you know, Mobius admits that Loki was right about the TVA and the, the, they're going to work together. So here we go. So we got the, the two big stars on the same team finally. And Loki <laughs> is not alone, which is what he was being told time and time again from Sif. I just want to point that out. <laughs> yes, if who needs her, right? Wow. Wow. I mean, of like Thor's buddies, she's like the fourth one, right? You know, she's mm. kind of there. She she, she got token yeah. about Thor. She got she's she got friend zone. That shows you her work. <laughs> That's true. Oh my god, Frank. That's 
terrible. Exactly. <laughs> I don't like Sith. I don't, I'm not a Sith fan at all. Oh, wow. Okay. I'm not. She, 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 she He's a Ravana that- fan, but not a Sith fan. I mean, one's good over the other, but that's fine. Is she really good? Sith, if, if Sith can have it her way, she would have killed Jane Foster a long time ago. She's never that good of a person. But do you yeah. like Jane Foster? No, I don't. Well, then what difference does it make? <laughs> I hate them both. I hate yeah, them. Like yeah. Hate's a strong word. I don't like either one of them. Okay. Yeah, they're, they're not, they're just, they're garnished. They're not needed characters. Yeah, they're, they're just, just there. Yeah. yeah. They're just there. Moving um, on. Yeah, moving on. The TVA and Ravona confront our new super friends team of Mobius and Loki. Unexpectedly, we Mobius is pruned in front of Loki, which I know when I first saw that, I was like, oh, wow, they're killing off Owen Wilson because, you know, obviously later on we learned that pruning doesn't necessarily mean death. Did, did, but, you, did you happen to go, wow? Sorry. No, but there is a part in the show where Owen Wilson's character says, how? That was yes. close to what we were going to get. The, I caught that too. Yeah. I caught that, like, yeah. How? 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 That was close. Yeah. That's wow. it. That's, that's all we'll get. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. We still got two I, more episodes. Yeah. That better not be it. He better come come back and do the wow. They, they said that he's not going to say it. They, Damn it. They've already said that they're not going to, that's as close as we're going to get. He's not going to say wow. This will be the first thing he's never said wow in. Well, Are you serious? Well, I promise you he'll say in, in the Wedding Crash sequel that's coming out next couple Oh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> So before dying, Mobius uh, says he would have he would go wherever he really was from before the TVA came along. Damn. Just want to be riding on my jet ski. So we get a sad, what we think is a send off for Mobius. What did y'all think about Mobius's quote unquote death? It it for sure kind of took me off guard. But then it, now knowing what we know about what happened to Loki, it's like okay, but is Mobius actually dead or? Where did he go? How is he going to come back? You know, this can't be the end for Mobius. Yeah, I don't, know. I don't think so. I don't think so. But what do y'all think? George, that, George Frank, that, was, that, was, that was too disappointing of a like a way for him to go. Like even before we saw the scene, I was like, "Come on, man! Like really? Just they just pruned him super easily. Doesn't even put up a fight. Nothing. It was kind of disappointing. But after we got that credit, that that mid credit scene, we we kind of see." And I, I sent all you guys that meme where Owen Wilson wakes up and it's like all the characters he's played in every movie. <laughs> yeah, that, exactly. That killed me. So yeah. there, he's probably just chilling with Lightning McQueen and, and the, the dude from uh, uh, Zoolander. Probably Jackie Chan too from uh, Shanghai Noon. Yeah, he was on so, that, that, that one. Yeah. It's one of my favorite movies that has Owen Wilson in it. Anyway. <laughs> Shanghai Noon is? I, I like that movie. It's it's entertaining to me. I don't know. Yeah. So no, then, but we need Mobius. He needs to come back. Oh, I have a theory. Do you think there's other different Mobiuses around? Because he <laughs> asked. No, no. I I mean like that. Ravine is not telling him about. Because oh. he asked about stuff like at her office, and like where this there's this other agent, right? That mm-hmm. she, he's not the only agent that works for him. But we never saw any other agents. So mm-hmm. I think it's really just several Mobiuses or something like that. Huh. Yeah. It's kind That's of strange. Because he kept he looked at that pen multiple times. Mm-hmm. Like it was from a memory or he remembered it or something. Because he did that in this episode as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, it also goes back to that, ep- like, I don't know if it's episode two or three where uh mobius is in ravona's chambers yeah and he notices there's like a, a circle you know like a cup circle or whatever yep a gla- the ring you know. yeah and he asks if you know if anyone else has been there or whatever and he it's him he, he calls out little stains because he kept doing he's the one that put it without a coaster each yeah. time there so i don't yeah. know it could be a possibility yeah it's i mean the theory they definitely showed that for a reason because you wouldn't just show sure. that because that yeah you know, whatever that, they focus on that shot and then like at the end credits like whenever the credits show up you always see the ring stain it's weird so 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 you think there's multiple movies that work for TVA yeah mm-hmm. yeah because she does reference another uh, I think they're called an uh, an analysis um, other agents 
yeah. that are like Mobius an- and analysts. Yeah. Analysts, yeah. yeah. Analysts. Sorry. I said that wrong. Yeah. My bad. Um, Uh-oh. First... Word mistake. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's the pot calling the kettle black, Justin. <laughs> Shit. Um, yeah. So the fact that there are other agents like him, but we've never seen. Yeah. It seems like we've never seen any other agents like him. No, at all. So, yeah. That's a good, that's a really good theory. That's a really good point. We'll see. I, I think there has to be more. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's just kind of strange. Like, why would they focus on these little details if they're not going to pay off in the end? And at least one of them is Luke Wilson. Got to be. <laughs> <laughs> I would, I would, that yeah. would be so funny. That would be great. Yeah. Well, one other thing that was weird for sure was when Sylvie and Loki are brought before the timekeepers and just like the ambiance of everything and just how the the timekeepers look and i was like this is like fucking wizard of oz you know type shit in my opinion you know the 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 voices were very i don't know uh, gurgly if that's like a word to use i don't know in my opinion it was almost difficult to understand them um they were like that band like they're animatronic like that band you see at chuck e cheese like when you're a kid and you go to chuck e cheese and there's the band playing yeah you mean bowling for soup oh my gosh no, the, the lead singer of the band is the voice now, but not when I was a kid. <laughs> Sorry, I had to do it. It's a fact. So did, did, did any of you guys like think like the one of the characters, the guy with the mustache, didn't look like a Dr. Seuss character like from the Lorax? Yes, the, I thought the same thing. <laughs> he looked just like, I was like, what? I was like, I've seen this character before. For real? Oh, yeah, that, that mustache was just epic. <laughs> that was funny. I don't know. That made me laugh. I was like, what is the character from the Lorax doing here? Yeah. But I will say that the timekeepers actually do, um, they have a very significant role because from what I read, they do clash with um, the Scarlet Witch, like a whole lot right and frank i don't know if, if, how much do you know about the timekeepers in general i don't know much about them they, they okay. were featured characters in in uh, the one vision um mm-hmm. uh, sorry which comic books and the cable series but because cable always went in and out of time as well find apocalypse but as okay. far as like, the tva comic book, i didn't read any of those comic books so from what I've read, again, about the Timekeepers and Scarlet Witch, they, ca- they clash a lot. Um, and they also try to prevent her from having children just because, you know, of how powerful she is and, like, she's a nexus being. And, and the word chaos is, is used um, in this episode as well. Um, I think Sylvie was talking about it um, to Loki when they were still on Lamentis. Um, and you know so there's we already know about this chaos magic that exists it's the scarlet witch um so a lot of this i think is definitely for sure gonna happen for um dr strange um you know multiverse multiverse of madness um so there's there's a lot of correlations between like this show wandavision and like i said you know dr strange for the future and also spider-man i mean there's gonna be some there's gonna be some some multiple uh I don't know about time travel, but multiple realities in, in, in that as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I, for sure. So, I mean, it, it almost seems like with these shows, they're going to be like just one offs that, in terms of shows, are not really connected to one another, but they, this one at least kind of has some connection to, you know, WandaVision, for example. Um, so, yeah, that I thought that was kind of cool. What did y'all think of the, um, of the fight scenes in general with uh happen on the timekeeper's floor using yeah, the I, pruning yeah, I liked stick. <laughs> yeah, like I, I thought the action scene toward the end was I mean the the very end was was pretty cool. You know, is mm-hmm. I I did not expect to see Loki get uh stabbed. You know, like I George, you were telling us how people were reacting online and they were sad about I, were they sad about his potential death or Mobius yeah, or I both? Think, I, I yeah. wasn't really sure. Yeah. I think they were sad about Mobius and his death. Uh, before they people watch the mid credit scene, so yeah, but uh, I mean, I think just people were upset about it. But I mean, if you knew Loki wasn't dead because there's the show's called Loki and there's exactly. two more episodes, so yeah, what would know. happen? Yeah. yeah, did did y'all notice though? It was very poetic about how Loki was stabbed. It's also how he took out Agent Coulson. He stabbed him okay. right in the back, okay. and you know, thus good catch. Yeah. Very, very reminiscent. Um, but also, I kind of related uh, Loki's 
vapor vaporization, whatever word you want to call it, um, to like that of vision when when uh, Wanda mm. was lifting the powers um, from from the town and and you know vision just dissolved. I was like, oh my god, because literally I'm watching it. I'm just like this, you know, like why is this happening? But yeah, like I said, you know, Loki going out the same way uh, Agent Coulson went out, and I'm like, ooh, that had to hurt. <laughs> Yeah, we see the uh, the lead timekeeper get his uh, head lopped off to reveal that it's a mindless android. Yeah. So the guess... others the others laughed after that. You know, I thought that was really yeah. strange. Like just because of the fact that the truth has been revealed, or I mean, they probably thought he's had it coming for a while because he sits <laughs> a, he sits above them, like behind them, so that you know he sees what happens with all their you know phones and computers and shit. So mm-hmm. he's you know, they're, they're they're probably just ready to be on the same. So let's talk about that post credit scene. That was the first post credit scene that uh, for this series, right? And, you know, we see Loki, he, you know, he's lying on his back and he's like, this is hell, you know, am I dead? And then you hear a voice off screen that says, no, but you will be if you don't come with us. And then zoom, we see- Crokey. It's croaky. Th- that's what I was saying. I told that to Justin uh, after I finished this episode, I messaged him, I'm like, I'm like crocodile Loki equals croaky. Croaky. Uh, yeah. You, yeah you, got four, you got four characters. You got kid Loki. You yeah. got croaky, which is the crocodile pet. You've got blokey, which is the black Loki. And you've got <laughs> smokey, which is the old gray haired dude in the suit. Oh, God. Now, okay. Two of, those I, Loki. two of those I made up. <laughs> two of those I definitely made up. And y'all can figure out which two I made up. But <laughs> yeah. So no, we've got classic Loki who is channeling his, his, vision halloween costume of himself basically it was just the the what is it the colored underwear above the leggings is just yeah. hilarious to me uh, but like yeah the costume that vision wore in uh that's what i just said that's okay. what i was saying he's channeling his his uh vision halloween you know yeah. version anyway um but then we've got a person of color who's loki we've got a black loki but he looks like he's wielding a hammer yeah. and if I'm not mistaken, I think there was a, a comic series or, or a, an issue. Maybe it's even what if where where Loki wields Mjolnir instead of Thor. So could this be that I don't adaptation? Think it was Mjolnir though. I think it's well, the base hardware. Yeah. Oh god. They had a sale. Good. Anyway, and then with with Kid Loki, um, yeah, we got Kid Loki with Croaky, and um, this is. Frank, and, and you've been talking about this for a while with the Young Avengers. This is now maybe our fourth actually seeing, you know, someone who's going to be part of the Young Avengers, which is, you know, Kid Loki. We've had Wiccan. Um, what's the other one? Speed? What's his name? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then we had Eli Bradley. Um, now we've got Kid Loki. So that, Marvel's next, you know, big project, I would assume, is going to be Young Avengers. So what do you think of the, the mid credit scene? I I had to watch it twice because I, I thought I was I thought I was tripping like are these different versions of Loki? And mm-hmm. then when I watched it the second time, I was like, how first off, how fuck is he gonna get out of this dimension or wherever he's in? Mm-hmm. Third of all, who the fuck is that guy in a Loki in a fake in a goofy Loki costume with the, <laughs> the green and the yellow real yeah. loud colors? Mm-hmm. I was like, he was a variant, that guy was a variant at some point in time. He was a threat. Of like nexting some event, like I, so um, I thought it was a good scene. I, I, it was it was because because we had, we, had, we hadn't had a Nick Red scene in weeks, even mm-hmm. going back to the Franklin Winter Soldier. So I think that that was a great job of like kind of like reminding the audience like, hey man, Loki's still around. You know now it's a whole new storyline. Figuring out how he's gonna come out of the situation. Mm-hmm. George, did you happen to catch? Um the background that you know these Lokis are at did you see the uh it's like the old abandoned New York City right that's what it seemed like yeah did you catch that the Avengers Tower is back there all Mm -hmm. destroyed or whatever so it's like okay where is this timeline like where does this fall you know in terms of what if it's a timeline where Tony didn't like Tony nuked the city when Loki... like, he did, like if he didn't make it to the border and he yeah. made the city on accident yeah or you know like when loki actually uh may have su- succeeded with the chitari 
um, and all that stuff. Like what, mm -hmm. would that be the New York? Is that what you're kind of saying? Yeah, um, maybe. Would that be the New York yeah, that we that... see had Loki been successful? Yep. Who knows? I mean, it's, it's a good question. Um, hopefully it's weird that they're all there. Yeah, it is. It's like, okay, do we, do we send all variant Lokis that are presumably pruned um yeah. to that same location and if so it goes back to that question that i had before like is loki the superior when you know they're all together and they're you know maybe coming into one i don't know like um i don't know because sylvie's not with loki obviously because he got pruned she didn't and and it looked like she maybe had defeated um ravana but but then uh, you know ravana was the one who pruned loki and now it's like Sylvie versus Ravana, you know, they're going to square off, finish, finish, you know, what was started. Um, so, and we only have what, two episodes left. Is that right? Yep. Yeah. Two episodes left. Yep. Yeah. And it looks like, you know, definitely uh, Sylvie had the upper hand on Ravona and she says, you're going to tell me everything. Mm -hmm. But before that Ravona is like, just kill me. So mm -hmm. it, that seems like a statement from someone who's not necessarily running everything. You know, she's, she's just a, uh, a spoke in the wheel i mean or a you know a big spoke in the wheel but she's not uh it's not her show per se so no she's yeah. uh she's loyal to to the end you know always as they yeah. would say it um, i guess she thinks that uh you know being pruned somewhere else is is uh you know better than failing the timekeepers or failing kang or whoever is in charge of this this whole yeah. uh, illusion uh yeah possibly yeah. So, so y'all have any other final thoughts on the episode? I thought it was a good episode. I mean, it, it definitely has the highest ratings um, in turn, according to IMDb, um, compared to the previous week's episode. And you know, it just seems like there's a lot that needs to be explained before the season's over. You know, so mm -hmm. do do any of you guys have like predictions of what's going to happen in the next episode? I put y'all on spot. I know. Sorry. I, I think Loki <laughs> and Sylvie are going to somehow find themselves again, find a way, find a way to each other. Maybe it'll be the very end of episode five. That's probably my prediction. I'm because of the, the setting that it looks like all four Lokis are at four, five. I'm sorry. I didn't count the crocodile. It's like, if let's say this is the, the time period where Loki succeeded um, with the Tesseract, et cetera, mm -hmm. could Loki 2012 Loki come against the other 2012 Loki if there's another 2012 Loki because I want to know where that scene of Loki with the horns and, and the suit and the vote for me kind of button where does that play into all of this you know what I'm saying like that wouldn't looks that have like already would that have already happened like in that timeline because right because that's when he first arrives to New York correct yeah. Well, right. But what I'm saying is the scene from like the trailers where we see Loki in the horns and the suit and he's got that little button that says like vote for me. That's that's from this series. Like the, right. the I want to know where that scene comes from. So I bet you we see that this next episode. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. I don't know. Um like I said, there has to be a lot that's gonna be covered um in the next two episodes for sure. And I would love to either see Loki come back into the Marvel movies or have another season. That's just my opinion. Frank. What my predictions? Just what you thought of this episode, predictions, whatever. It was a really good episode. Um, I thought Ben Stiller was on very, very well. I think Sylvie, I think Sylvie dies. I think, I think that's, that's going to be a result of Loki destroying the TVA. Okay, Brittany, how can people find us on social media? So let us know what your predictions are about Loki uh, episode five that premieres next week. Uh, we love to know what your thoughts are and just what you think about the show in general. So find the watchers in the basement on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And also don't forget to use hashtag watchers basement when tweeting us or just, you know, using social media. Uh, that's a great way to, you know, communicate with us. Uh, let us know what you want us to review and what you think of our show and don't forget to share this podcast to let others know that we're here hey hello um also if you're not into video podcasts uh because we are on youtube if i've already 
failed to mention that. Uh, be sure to subscribe to us and hit that notification bell. Also, uh, you can find us on audio podcasts uh, on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and Spotify, and many more thanks to Anchor.fm. We appreciate everyone who has subscribed, has liked our stuff, and left us comments. Uh, we thank you all very much for your support, and let's keep it going. Let's keep sharing about the Watchers in the Basement. Yes, please do that. Thank you, Brittany. And I just want to add, I did an audio podcast earlier this week. I made my triumphant return to the theaters to check out F9, the Fast Saga. So please give that a listen. I, uh, I enjoyed my time there. So it's great. Check it out. Yeah, check it's it great. out. So anyway, for, for Brittany, for George, for Frank, this is Justin saying we'll see you next week as we watch or as we uh, review episode five of Loki. See you next time. Thanks. Thank you.